Now let us look at the effect of share repurchase on book value per share. Let us take an example. Share price of both company A and company B is given to be $20 per share. The shares outstanding are 15 million and both are planning to have 10 million dollar stock buyback. The book values are different 500 million for company A and 200 million for company B. Now it is asking book value per share after the share repurchase. In this example we will notice what is the impact of share repurchase on book value we will have book value before and after the repurchase for both the companies and observe the behavior. So the number of shares which will be bought back from this 10 million dollar will be 10 million dollar divided by 20 dollar which is the price of the share. So it will be 500,000 shares. These are the number of shares which will be bought back for both company A and company B. And remaining shares after the repurchase will be 15 million which was the earlier shares outstanding minus 500,000 shares which are supposed to be bought back. The difference is 14 and half million. So this is remaining shares. Let us look at the book value of company A which is 500 million dollars so book value per share will be 500 million dollar divided by 15 million outstanding shares so book value per share comes out to be 33.33 dollars if we notice here the book value 33.3 is greater than the market price so which says the company is underpriced here let us look at the book value after repurchase so 500 million dollar minus 10 million the money from which we are planning to buy so this is the cash which will be reduced from the book value new book value will be 490 million dollar the new number of shares will be 14 and half million dollar we have calculated right here so from there 14 and half million dollar so book value per share will be 33.79 so if we notice the book value has increased a little bit by 0.46 dollars let us observe the same thing for company B the current book value per share is 200 million dollar what was the book value of the company divided by 15 million outstanding shares the book value per share is 13.33 and in this case market price is higher than the book value so the company is overvalued in this case now let us notice what happens after the repurchase. So book value is subtracted by 10 million dollar. New book value is 190 million dollar. And book value per share is 190 million dollar divided by 14 and half million which is the number of outstanding shares. So the book value per share is 13 and 13.1 dollar. If we notice this book value has been reduced by 0.22 dollars so there is a reduction in book value in the case of company B and in the case of company A we notice that there is an increase in book value so in another words if we try to put it in our observations for company A the book value was more than the price in this case after repurchase book value is increased this is for company A for company B book value was already less than the price so after repurchase book value reduced. If we rephrase the phenomena we can say that if the price is less it is wise to repurchase book value will rise but if the price is higher 
then we should not go for repurchase otherwise book value will fall let us move to the next slide here we'll notice that the cash dividend is equivalent to share repurchase for the shareholder it will not make any difference if cash dividend is paid or share repurchase is made in both the cases the wealth remains the same here we are assuming that the taxation and information content of cash dividend is not making any difference on the share price for the simplicity let us take an example to clarify the things further there is a company XYZ which is expected to have 10 million earnings and its plan to distribute 6 million out of it through cash dividend or stock repurchase the company has both the options the current price of the share is $20 and the current number of outstanding shares are 1 million and the assumption is the stock repurchase can be completed at the current price $20 so let us take the first case where the company pays cash dividend the company had 10 million dollar earnings from which it plans to distribute 6 million dollar through cash dividend so per share dividend will be 6 million divided by 1 million which were the outstanding shares so per share dividend will be six dollars because of this after x dividend date the per share value of the share the per share value will be reduced by the same amount so the new share price will be fourteen dollar so now total wealth for a shareholder will be the same fourteen dollar plus six dollar dividend what he received net is twenty dollar which is the same let us look at the case where the company is repurchasing the share he is not providing any cash dividend but repurchasing so number of shares which we can repurchase from the six million dollar which we are planning to distribute divided by the share price will be 0.3 million so 0.3 million number of shares can be repurchased with this money so what will be the price after repurchase as we know the earlier market capitalization was 20 into 1 million now 6 million will come down because of this amount what is repurchased and number of shares will be 1 million minus 300,000 that is 0.3 million from here and the answer remains 20 dollar so again the total wealth remains the same per share 20 dollar so to a shareholder it is not making any difference whether the dividend is paid in cash or in terms of stock repurchase okay so that brings us to the end of the topic now let us look at a few questions this is the first question at a recent conference dividends are the increasing several lectures were discussing the signaling effect and their opinions on how changes in a company's dividend policy are viewed by the investors so Linda Travis an equity analyst is making these two observations we need to check which of them is correct first observation says a dividend initiation is always viewed look at the word always as a positive signal by the investors and it's an indication that the company has so much cash that it can afford to pay to its shareholders this cannot be always true sometimes it could be taken as indication that company does not have enough projects to invest which is a negative signal so observation one is incorrect let us look at the observation two a dividend decrease is typically a positive signal by company's management to its shareholders it indicates that management has a variety of positive NPV projects in its capital budget and it's planning to finance them through the retained earnings it could be true in some cases but 
we cannot say it is typically a positive signal because it depends on many other factors. Again, dividend decrease can also be taken as that company does not have enough cash and it is facing liquidity problems, etc. So even observation 2 is incorrect. So the right answer is B. Both are incorrect. Let us move to question number 2. Shareholders selling shares between the X dividend date and date of record. We know that X dividend date is the date on which the shareholder will receive the dividend if he or she is holding the share before the state. So in this case it is clear that shareholders are selling the share after this date and before date of record. So he or she will receive the dividend. C is the right answer. So now let us move to question number 3. Stock splits. By definition we have read that they do not affect the value of the firm. So A is the right answer. Let us move to question number 4. In this example, the company has 8 million shares outstanding. Current share price is $34. And company is planning to distribute $22 million as dividend. Either through cash or through repurchase of the shares. So ignoring the tax effects. What will be the amount of total wealth from owning one share of the company? We have just observed that the shareholder's wealth will not change because of dividend or share repurchase. It should remain the same, $34 per share. So B should be the right answer. But for the sake of explanation, let me show you how it remains the same. So let us take first case where cash dividend is $34. So let us take the first case in which cash dividend has been paid. So from $22 million, what is the dividend per share we will be able to pay? Dividend per share will be $22 million divided by total number of outstanding share which is $8 million. So this will be which will be 2.75 dollar so new share price will be 34 minus 2.75 which is 31.25 so this is the new share price this is the dividend which shareholders get sum of these two will be again 34 31.25 and this amount 2.75 this is the total wealth which will be 34 in the case of share repurchase let us look at the number of shares repurchased there will be 22 million dollar divided by the share price which is 34 dollar so this will be 0.64 million shares so the new share price will be 0.64 total wealth earlier 8 million into 34 dollars minus 22 million dollars divided by 8 million minus 0.64 million shares so this will be again the same 34 dollars so the shareholders wealth remain the same these are the answers of the given questions